Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this video, we're going to talk about the main reasons for using a transmission in your conversion. Well, the number one reason why you're probably going to want to use a transmission in your conversion would be voltage. And there's lots of reasons why you might choose to use a transmission. But the number one reason most people would make that decision would be because of voltage. And why voltage? Well, in simplistic terms, voltage equals RPMs. Amps equals torque. And we're going to look at some graphs that show this, okay? So, I mean, I prefer you just take my word for these things. But we'll, we'll show you some graphs, too. Anyway, voltage equals RPMs. And so the reason the transmission comes into play is that most of the traditional motors and controllers are... You know, the most popular ones, they're basically from 120 volts to 180 volts. And you'll see that the limitation in that means that the power band on these typically tops out at a maximum 6,000 RPM. Well, in case it's not clear to you yet, an RPM limitation like 6,000 RPMs, um, I'm going to explain to you. But first, let me tell you that most of these motors, the sweet spot is typically in the 3,000 RPM range. And by sweet spot, I mean where they're the most efficient. Okay, where you're getting the most bang for your buck, where you're getting the, uh, the greatest efficiency, and so the, the greater output for your input. You can, you know, go beyond 6,000 RPMs on some of these. They'll have a red line, so to speak, a, a RPM maximum of 65 to 8,000. But usually when you get past 6,000 RPMs, your power and horsepower is dropping off. You've peaked, okay? And depending on the, the voltage, it'll be less than that. Um, the AC50, for instance, at, um, at 130 volts, it's, it's dropping off at 4,000 RPMs. The AC51 at 170 volts is dropping off at 5,000 RPMs. So that's because of the voltage, okay? That's just kind of the end of that, that uh, range of RPMs based on our input voltage. Now, why is that a problem? Well, think about it. If you've got a transmission that when you're in high gear, you have a one-to-one, -one, okay? So in other words, um, the output shaft is turning the same speed as the input shaft. So imagine trying to take off in fourth gear. You're going to have very sluggish acceleration. Even with electric motor with maximum torque at zero RPMs, it's going to be sluggish with most vehicles with that gear ratio, okay? And you think about it, most vehicles, their final drive ratio, somewhere between three and a half and four and a half uh, to one. Whereas most electric vehicles, OEMs, they have an eight and a quarter to 10, okay? And the reason for that is so they can get that brisk acceleration. And then the other difference is that they're typically 
280 volts on 400 and some even much greater than that. Some even double that, some of these cars are coming out with. So, you know, you can see why uh, that greater voltage allows these OEM motors to have RPM ranges from 12 to 16,000 RPMs, uh, the Tesla up to 20,000 RPMs. That's how they can go from zero to over 100 miles an hour with one gear set. When you're running lower voltages, you're not going to have a single gear set that's going to give you good acceleration and a top speed that you want. So if we changed our, our final drive, our, our differential, to where it allowed for brisk acceleration in this voltage range, we would top out somewhere around 50 miles an hour. And we've done another video where we did the gear ratios and the tire size and all that and showed that years ago. But that's the reality. With a single gear set, these just don't provide good, satisfactory uh, outcome unless you have a very light vehicle and you can have, you know, uh, or a vehicle that's not going to have a very high top end, one or the other. You just don't have enough RPMs to have a comfortable single um, gear set that would be, you know, compatible with most people's driving. Okay, and then the other is, you know, when you, when you take it off and you have a single gear set, you're using more energy to get rolling because you, you've got a gear set that's going to allow you to get all the way up to a top speed, say, 85, 90 minimum. And so that energy required to get moving is going to be greater than it would be if you were using a gearbox and could, you know, change your ratio. And so what happens is you're pulling more energy, which creates more heat in the motor, more heat in your inverter, on and on and on. It's just not the most efficient way to drive. So using the transmission, it's, uh, it, it amplifies our torque and allows us to have a, a broader uh, you know, speed range with our limited RPMs. Another you know, little factoid for you is that in order to get the same performance from a direct drive system versus the transmission. You have to have two and a half to three times the horsepower. Okay, so if you're gonna use a motor and a direct drive, in order to match the same performance of a motor that you're going through the transmission, that one in direct drive needs to be two and a half to three times as powerful to match the performance. At the end of this video, we'll take a look at, at some power charts and look at four different voltages and a couple different current ratings and see how they affect the power curves. The second main reason you may want to use a, a transmission in a conversion is efficiency. The transmission allows you to keep the motor in the most efficient RPM range for the speed as well as the load so forth. Okay, so for any given situation, having that transmission gives you the ability to operate more, efficiency, more efficiently. So that's our number two reason. And the number three reason, ease of conversion. Now, I'm sure you're familiar or aware of the process of a conversion using the stock transmission or transaxle. You basically remove the internal combustion engine from the bell housing and then we take an adapter that mates the motor to the bell housing and we have a coupler that mates to the motor's output shaft and the other side of that coupler, coupler uh, mimics the end of the crankshaft so that you can mount the flywheel and clutch assembly on that. 
And all of that is done in such a way that when you mount that assembly, the, the adapter, coupler, flywheel and cutch assembly to that bell housing, it's replicating what was in there already. All those distances and everything are identically the same. So the car doesn't know any difference. It's just bolted in. And then the other thing that you have to do is, is have a motor mounting system that mounts that motor in the vehicle, supports it in place, you know, due to gravity and so forth, and supports it as far as torque is concerned so it can't rotate. And that's relatively easy to do, okay? Uh, a lot of the adapter couplers are, uh, nowadays, they're available off the shelf. Somebody's got one. Um, we, we bought one here uh, not too long ago from uh, um, a place in the UK. And we actually got it faster than we did the one that we ordered from California. So it's uh, a lot of times it's cheaper to order it off the shelf than, than for us to go to our local machine shop and have them make it. And if, they, and if someone's got it on the shelf, it's definitely faster than waiting for a machine shop to make it. So, uh, and then like I said, the motor mounting part, that's, that's even easier than the adapter coupler. But that is just a fairly simplistic way to do it. Now, if you remove the transmission, now you have to couple to that uh, differential in some way, you know. So you're, you're still going to have to mount the motor and uh, come up with the alignment and, and, and all of that. And so it, it tends to be a little more involved. Um, and there's multiple ways to do it. So, you know, I can't, you know, one, there's, there's not one case scenario anymore. And so, um, but typically, you'll have, uh, you know, an easier time doing this. And then you have the other advantages that we talked about up here also. And so then the fourth, the fourth reason, cost. It's typically less expensive to go with the transmission, to go with uh, a motor that is uh, lower voltage, they're less expensive uh, typically. Um, you can buy them brand new, you're not buying a salvaged component. Um, and so you have factory warranties. Um, because they're lower voltage, you're gonna have a smaller battery pack as far as voltage goes. Um, capacity, again, that kind of up to you, but it, 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 typically if you're going to have a smaller uh, pack, it's going to cost you less money. Um, typically less fabrications we talked about here. And of course, if, it, if it's more efficient, it's going to cost you less as far as charging goes. So those are the four main reasons uh, why you might want to use a transmission in your conversion. It's by no means the only way to go. There's lots of options today, but one of those popular questions that we receive is, why are you using a transmission? Well, it's because we don't use salvage components and most of our conversions and most of the conversion uh, packages that we sell people are lower voltage. That's what a lot of people feel more comfortable with. They don't feel comfortable with 400 volts, but they feel, you know, comfortable with, you know, 120, 180. And, um, and then the cost. So let's take a look at those power graphs that I told you about. Well, as I mentioned, we're going to look at four different voltages. The first one we're going to look at, and they're all the AC50, so they're all the same motor, but we're going to have four different voltages and uh, a couple different, um, well, we're going to have, this is 550, we're going to 500 amp controller, it's 550 and 650. So 
what we're looking at here is we can see that we're, we're peaking maximum you know, um, current here, maximum torque goes out to here. So we start off with almost 100 pound feet, go out here to 92, and it starts to drop. Horsepower drops a few hundred RPMs after that. So basically, after like 3,200 RPMs, um, you're, you're dropping off. And if you continue, you know, the, the current peaks just about that same time, and then it's going to start to drop off. But there really isn't any return on your investment after that point. So that's what I was getting at. So that's your, your peak on this. So let's look at 96 volts. Well, with 96 volts, you can see that our, uh, from that 72 to 96, we've run out a little bit further. So now the torque goes out here. They're both at about 34, 33, 3400 RPMs. So a little bit further. Notice that um, the torque, remember the torque on the 72 volt 550 amp, so it's the 550 amps that's dictating the fact that we have 99.71 pound-feet of torque. Look at what uh, we have with 650 amps. We have 121, 120 and a half. Now, we're going to go up to 108 volts. Still 650 amps. You can see the uh, the uh, maximum torque really doesn't change. Our horsepower goes up a little bit, but our curve goes out a little further. Okay, so we've gone from 72 to 108. Not a huge change in voltage here. This last example, we're going to drop back down to 500 amps but we're going to go up to 144 volts. So at 144 volts, you can see that our, you know, our torque has, has dropped at the 500 amps. But uh, look at how far out it goes. And the horsepower, almost to 6,000. We're basically, you know, we're, we're peaking torque and horsepower just shy of 6,000 RPMs from 108 to 144. So you start to get, you know, see the picture. I'm using these as an example because these are just graphs that High Performance Electric Vehicle Systems makes available, and so that's something we have that we can, can show you. Now, believe me, if we keep taking this, you know, we go on up in voltage, uh, we continue to see this you know, this knee, so to speak, or this peak, go further out in the RPM range. But again, this motor wasn't really designed. This one was designed uh, for the Curtis um, controller that was uh, 130 volt maximum, so the 1238 uh, Curtis controller. And um, this one right here, this is the 1239 controller, which was um, the AC51 was designed around that. And so you can see a little difference between those two. Let me show you. So the AC50 is a, a pretty versatile little, little motor. Um, I, I like it. What I'm running in my bug, what I ran in my Carmen Ghia, is the AC51. And it's in my bug because we pulled it out of the Carmen Ghia and put it in the bug when I sold the Carmen Ghia. Um, but in our bug conversions, we typically use the AC50. And, um, and it's typically, um, oh, not a chart for it here, but it's, a, uh, it's 120 volt, 650 amps. So it's out to about, uh, you know, 4,000 RPMs. The um, AC51, you can see the 
torque on the AC50 with that same controller is 86. With the AC51, it's 108. It's because the motor's wound differently, it's designed for this higher voltage, lower current controller. You look at the horsepower, not much difference. 87, 30, and this is 88. So basically the same horsepower, but you can see that with this one, it's dropped back in the RPM range. So this has a real gradual increase in horsepower. It's a little steeper horsepower curve on the AC51. Now on my bug with the AC51 and the Curtis 1239 controller, this controller, um, and I'm running 146 nominal, and it's got the freeway flyer transaxle in it, which means it's got a, a, a taller fourth gear than a stock one. At this RPM, I'm doing 100 miles an hour. So at 100 miles an hour, I've got peak power. I mean, so it's, um, you don't like going that, you know, much faster than that in a bug anyway. But yeah, it pulls and, and runs down the freeway. Um, as comfortable as you'd ever want to be. It's a it's a uh, nice riding vehicle on the freeway, and um, and it cruises with with traffic. Doesn't matter if we're running, you know, 85, 90. It, it keeps up no problem. Way I just wanted to add another perspective of why some people choose to retain the transmission and uh, in their conversion, and maybe in the down the road will make a, um, a video regarding those that uh, choose to go without a transmission and look at some of those options also. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you'd subscribe, hit that like button, and uh, hope to see you again soon.